the fuck going on with y'all man and welcome to the best endgame barbarian build for diablo 4 hammer of the ancients this is my current level 80 barbarian clearing tier 30 plus nightmare dungeons with ease it does big damage has nice defense and is pretty easy to play as well if you like melee builds that can do the big smash smash then this is definitely the build for you in this video we're going to talk about the skills used in this build the arsenal system gear and what stats to look for the codex of power and what legendary aspects to imprint the paragon board and what glyphs to socket the best nightmare dungeons to run and what affixes to avoid a small progression checklist to help you level your character and a few tips and tricks to help with your overall diablo 4 experience and with that being said let's get started with the skills here is a list of all the skill points we pick up in our skills tree including our main skills our passive skills, and our key passive. Let's go ahead and talk about our main skills. Hammer of the Ancients is our main damage skill. This is the skill that the build is focused around. It deals a ton of damage, has low fury cost, and has a decent AoE when combined with a certain legendary aspect, which we'll discuss later. Rallying Cry is one of our shouts that gives us movement speed and fury generation. It also grants you unstoppable for a short amount of time, making you immune to CC. Challenging Shout is one of our main defensive boosts and also regenerates Fury when we get hit. It not only gives us damage reduction, but a huge 20% bonus to our maximum life. Warcry is our last Shout and gives us a decent damage buff for a short amount of time. It also grants Berserking and Fortified, giving us a nice balance of offense and defense. Wrath of the Berserker is our ultimate ability and gives us a lot of useful things. Berserking, Unstoppable, Movement Speed, Fury Generation, and a damage boost on top of all that. And finally, our basic skill, Lunging Strike. This skill is mainly used to generate fury, and that's pretty much it. Once you have enough fury generation, you can swap this out for a mobility skill like Leap or Charge, or a reliable CC, like Ground Stomp. This choice, of course, depends on your playstyle, so go what you like. The key passive that we take for this build is Unbridled Rage. Pretty self-explanatory here. Do more damage, but spend more resource. This is the reason why Fury Generation is so important with this build, and luckily there are plenty of ways to do that. Now that we've gone over the skills used in this build, let's go over the unique class mechanic for Barbarians, the Arsenal System. The Arsenal System allows Barbarians to use a specific skill for every attack skill, each granting different bonuses. We're only concerned with two of these bonuses though, the Two-Handed Mace Expertise and the Two-Handed Sword Expertise. The Two-Handed Mace Expertise gives us Fury Generation, and because we're always using a two-handed bludgeoning weapon via our main skill, Hammer of the Ancients, we're always granted this bonus. However, in the Technique slot, we want to put in the Two-Handed Sword Expertise, which applies bleeding to anything that we hit. The reason why this is important is because it synergizes really well with Hamstring, our one-point passive wonder, turning our bleed into a slow. This allows us to take full advantage of other passives like No Mercy, and damaging stats against crowd controlled and bleeding enemies. If you want to level up the other weapons in the arsenal, then by all means go ahead and do so. But this build really only benefits from using maces and swords, so there's really no need. Now that we've gone over the skills and arsenal used in this build, let's move on to the gear. Here is a list of each piece of gear, what stats to look for, and what gems to socket inside of them. For our main weapon, we want to use any high DPS two-handed bludgeoning weapon with vulnerable damage, critical strike damage, or strength. For our dual wield offhands and our two-handed slashing offhand, we want to use swords because of their critical strike damage implicit. Other important stats for this build are cooldown reduction, defensive stats like damage reduction and life, skill ranks, and anything involving fury. Cooldown reduction gives us more uptime on our shouts and our ultimate. This is very crucial because we can't really fight elites or bosses without these active. Defensive stats like damage reduction and life may not be appealing stats, but become more and more essential as you enter higher tier content. As you get stronger, so do the monsters, and without any defense, you'll just end up getting one-shotted all the time. Skill ranks to Challenging Shout and Hammer of the Ancients simply make those abilities more potent. If you are lucky enough to find high item levels of each, you can pretty much double their ranks. As I mentioned before, Fury Generation is what makes this build go from pretty good 
to absolutely destroying all content Hulk Smash style. The more fury at your disposal means the more hammers you could spam. It's as simple as that. All right, now that we've talked about what stats look for on our gear, let's talk about what legendary aspects to imprint on them as well. Here is, again, another list of each piece of gear, but this time it's showing what legendary aspects to use. For our main weapon, we put on the aspect of Ancestral Force. This makes Hammer of the Ancients actually have good AoE, so I'd suggest picking this up as soon as possible. For our dual weapons, we use Edge Masters and Berserk Ripping, giving us extra flat damage and bleeding damage. For our two-handed offhand, we imprint the aspect of Limitless Rage, which gives us more damage depending on our Fury generation. And because we have so much of that, it's a nice boost to our core skill. For our helm, we want the Iron Blood aspect, which gives us damage reduction based on nearby bleeding enemies. And because we're always applying bleeding to our enemies, it's pretty much active at all times. For our chest, we use the aspect of Numbing Wrath, granting us Fortify based on our Fury generation. Fortify is a great defensive layer to have, and we pretty much have it all the time. For gloves, we put on the aspect of the Expectant, which increases the damage of our Hammer of the Ancients if we use a few lunging strikes. Pretty simple here. For pants, we imprint the aspect of Disobedience. I'm pretty sure I use this aspect for every single build that I have, because it's such a reliable way to stack armor, even for squishy characters. On boots, we want to use the Ghost Walker aspect for some extra movement speed and the ability to phase through enemies while fighting, which is extremely useful. On amulets, we use the Conceited aspect, giving us a nice damage boost whenever we have a barrier. And for rings, we use the Bold Chieftain's aspect to lower the cooldown on our shouts, and the aspect of Echoing Fury, giving us even more Fury Generation. Most of these aspects can be attained through completing dungeons, as listed here, but unfortunately, some must be found on random legendary pieces of gear, so keep your eyes peeled. Okay, so that's it for the legendary aspects, but we're not done with gear just yet. Let's go over some uniques that we can use for this build. Here are a few uniques that you can consider best in slot for this build. The Grandfather is the best stat stick that you can find. It gives a boatload of damage, enormous amounts of life, and a significant boost to all your stats. Unfortunately, I was never able to find this weapon, but if I did, I would definitely equip it right away, upgrade it fully, socket a couple royal emeralds in there, and call it a day. I suggest you do the same if you're lucky enough to come across this bad boy. Temerity provides one of the easiest ways to grant any character a nicely sized barrier. It's also one of the more common uniques in the game. I think I was able to find three between levels 50 and 80. In fact, I'm using one right now! And I don't think I'll be taking it off anytime soon. And finally, Harlequin Crest. This is one of those uniques that every single class or build in Diablo 4 may consider their best in slot. I mean, look at it. Life, cooldown reduction, resource generation, damage reduction, but wait for it, plus four ranks to all skills. Unfortunately, that only applies to your active skills, not your passives. But still, that's insane. If you end up obtaining such a godlike item, then congratulations, you've beat the game. But we're not done just yet. Now we're going to move on to what truly makes your character enter god tier levels of strength, the Paragon Board. On page one, path up the right side, get the socket, and put in Crusher. This glyph increases our damage with maces, the more strength nodes we have within range. So at max glyph level, this can give up to 74% bonus to your damage. Huge. It also gives a nice boost to our overpower damage, which is damage calculated by your life and fortify, two things that you should have a good amount of. On page two, we use the Warbringer board and rotate it so that the socket is in the bottom left. Rush to it and put in the exploit glyph. I think I use this glyph in every build because it's so damn good. It can grant up to 40% vulnerable damage, but more importantly, it gives us a super easy way to apply vulnerable. After getting the socket node, path towards the middle of the board to eventually get the legendary node Warbringer, which grants us fortify most of the time. On page three, we use the flawless technique board and rotate it so that the socket is facing upwards. Go towards the socket and put in the Territorial Glyph. This glyph grants us up to 70% damage to close enemies, and because we're a melee build, that basically means all the time. 
and also, we additionally get a small amount of damage reduction to close enemies as well. On page 4, we use the decimator board and rotate it so that the socket is closest to us, where we are going to put in the martial glyph. This grants a huge bonus to all magic nodes within range, so we get a bunch of useful stuff here, like vulnerable damage, damage reduction, and some stats. However, for me, the more important part of this glyph was the bonus that it gave. Uptime on our shouts, as mentioned earlier, is really important to stay in the fight, so the more ways to increase that, the better. On page 5, we use the Blood Rage board and rotate it so, so that the socket is in the top left, giving us easy access to it. For this board, we use the Disembowel Glyph, which we are now scaling our bleed damage. At first, we were using bleed to only apply slow, but now that we're entering the million damage numbers on our hammer, bleed damage starts to matter. Not only that, the bonus for this glyph gives us yet another way to lower the cooldown of our shouts. Eventually, our character will just end up yelling eternally. For the last and final sixth page of our Paragon board, we use Bone Breaker and rotate it so that the socket is in the bottom left. In the socket, we put in the Wrath Glyph, giving us a ton of critical strike damage and even a bit of fury generation, which we love so much in this build. Seriously, you can never have enough fury generation. More fury equals more smash. Here are the glyphs mentioned for the Paragon board and the order in which to level them by. First, I would focus on getting them each to 15, increasing their range and power. Then I would level them all the way up to 21, which is their max level. At this point, there will be very few things in the game that can touch you. So enjoy being a god for a little while. All right, now that we've gone over everything that makes this build as strong as it is, let's talk about some nightmare dungeons. Here is a list of the top 10 nightmare dungeons that I felt were the easiest to run and gave the most XP for this build. In these dungeons, make sure to complete them all the way through, killing all elites and large packs of mobs along the way, and to do any events that you run into, because they normally give a good amount of XP and items. Because this build is so strong, it can deal with most affixes that these sigils can produce. However, there are a few that I would look out for. The affix that I would always avoid, for every build pretty much, is the Monster Attacks Burn Primary Resource one. This one just fucking sucks. It's doable, but really annoying and not really worth it in my opinion. If you end up rolling this affix on one of your favorite Nightmare Dungeons, just salvage it and save time. Other annoying affixes are Lightning Storm, Death Pulse, and Stormbane's Wrath. Lightning Storm deals heavy damage to you periodically that can be avoided by stepping into a protective bubble. This bubble is usually spawned behind you, causing you to backtrack a bunch of times. Death Pulse is simply an after-death explosion mechanic. Personally, I hate these and think that they shouldn't exist in games like this because it cucks melee so hard. But whenever you get this affix, just keep it in mind and move away after you bonk stuff. Stormbane's Wrath spawns a stupid little red death crystal that follows you around and does a delayed pulsing damage to a fairly large area. Again, something easy to avoid, just annoying to keep track of. Just keep moving, just keep moving. Okay, we have now discussed everything we need to know to make our character strong and level it fast via Nightmare Dungeons. Let's put all this knowledge together and finally start progressing your Barbarian. Here is a small, easy to follow progression checklist that you can use while leveling your character. The absolute first thing that you should do before anything else is obtain all the aspects that you're going to use in this build, at least the ones that you can get through dungeons. The reason why we do this first is because we want to have these aspects ready to imprint on our new and improved gear. The next thing you should do is farm Renown 5 in all regions, which is definitely a lot easier to say than to actually do, but you gotta do it eventually. Those extra skill points and paragon points go a long way in building your character, and they also apply to any other characters you have in that realm. And to help you do this, let me tell you how I did it. First, I got all the waypoints, making it easy to travel. Then, I did all the strongholds because they were good sources of XP and unlocked other important things like more waypoints and dungeons. Then, I got all the altars of Lilith, which is probably the most daunting task of all. But with the help of the interactive map, it made it a lot easier than I thought, which we'll talk about later. After the altars, I completed all the dungeons. After the dungeons, I did the amount of side quests necessary to reach max renown in all regions. And there you go. I know it sounds like a lot, and it is, but trust me, 
it's 100% worth it. Once you've completed all of this, first of all, congrats on your hard work. The next thing you should do, if you haven't done so already, is obtain a full set of sacred gear. For sacred gear, I would suggest only upgrading a high DPS weapon with a good stats no more than four times. The reason why we don't want to do too much with sacred gear is because it'll get replaced by ancestral gear pretty quickly. So make sure to save all your resources until then. Once you've obtained a full set of sacred gear, then proceed to level up to 70 via nightmare dungeons, helltides, cheer whispers, world events, whatever you want. Once at 70, do the capstone dungeon in order to unlock world tier 4. And your first order of business at world tier 4 is to get a full set of ancestral gear. If you are lucky enough to find a good piece with two out of three of the stats that was mentioned earlier, then go ahead and enchant a third good stat on it. Upgrade it fully, add sockets if need be, and then imprint your highest rolled aspect on it as well. And there you go. You pretty much have a best in slot. While you're doing this, fill out your paragon board and upgrade your glyphs. And now your character is reaching god tier levels of strength. At this point, you can do whatever you want. Level to 100, climb Nightmare Dungeon tiers, fight Lilith, the open world is yours. Alright, now that we've gone over some progression advice, let's discuss a few tips and tricks to help with your overall Diablo 4 experience. Like I mentioned in the previous slide, I used the Diablo 4 interactive map in order to farm Renown 5 in all regions. This map literally shows where everything is in the open world. Waypoints, dungeons, altars, everything. If you would like to save hours and hours of gameplay, then I would highly suggest using this website. I'll go ahead and link it down below in the description. Another valuable website to use while you're roaming around Sanctuary is the Helltide and Mystery Chest Tracker. Helltides are probably the easiest way to gear up your character and farm forgotten souls, which is the most important material in the game, by the way. Scattered throughout these areas are random chests full of gear, some with weapons, some with armor, and some with jewelry. However, there are secret chests you can find that give the most loot, and these are called mystery chests. Unfortunately, they are not displayed as vividly as the other chests on your map, so they're pretty hard to locate. Luckily, there is a website that not only tracks Helltides, but also tracks the mystery chests inside a Helltide. And there are two mystery chests per Helltide. Now, you don't have to do every single Helltide that pops up on your map, but you do want to do them occasionally to make sure you have a nice stack of Forgotten Souls. Again, I'll go ahead and link this super useful tool down below in the description. And as you're getting more and more gear, filtering out bad and good pieces, make sure to keep well-rolled aspects and uniques you might want to use later. However, for the most part, the gear that you will find will most likely be just bad. What you are going to do with this bad gear is to sell it to the vendor and not salvage it. It's pretty easy to come across material in this game, but gold? Gold is best obtained through selling stuff. And when you're trying to make your gear as godly as possible, it becomes extremely expensive. Now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with salvaging here and there to keep up with your resources. But for the majority of the time, sell, sell, sell. And while you're traveling around the open world, make sure you are picking up any and all materials that you come across. Some of these materials are herbs, and herbs are used to craft elixirs. After level 50, you basically want to have an elixir active at all times. One, because they give a pretty nice buff, and two, more importantly, for that extra 5% XP boost. Which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but over time, can amount to a lot. And like most builds in Diablo 4, you can't just run around, press one button, and have a good time. No. It's actually going to take some kind of strategy. The most basic method that I would recommend is instead of killing one monster at a time, gather them all up first, and then use all your abilities. This way you get the most out of your cooldowns and you expend the least amount of resource. Speaking of killing mobs, let's go more in depth and tell you how to approach large packs, elites, or bosses. First, use all your shouts and Wrath of the Berserker at the same time. I'm not kidding. Literally piano the first four skills on your skill bar. These are buffs and we want to make sure they are active before big fights. Once they're all up, then go ahead and proceed to hammer your way to victory. If you run out of fury, lunging strike a couple times and keep smashing. Whatever you're dealing with should be dead shortly. 
And there we have it, y'all. The best endgame barbarian build for Diablo 4. And remember, this is just a build template. If you disagree with anything in this video, then feel free to just do whatever you want. I just wanted to provide a simple, easy to follow build guide that would help those who are struggling with progressing with their character. And hopefully I've done that. And hey, if you did find any parts of this video useful, then I'm super glad. I have now finished an end game build guide for all the classes in Diablo 4, along with a leveling guide as well. Let's fucking go. The next thing I want to do is make a starter build for each class as soon as they've dropped the big season one patch. So be on the lookout for those videos, along with a lot more video ideas that I have in the stash. So if you're interested in anything Diablo 4, throw me a sub, yeah? Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And remember to stay a while and listen. Peace out.